When you hear healthcare in Africa, what are you thinking? If you're like most people, I'm sure you're thinking about maternal death, doctors dying because there's no oxygen, and I'm sure you're thinking about doctors having to do surgeries in the dark. You may also be thinking about doctors using curtains to create incubators for little children. We're all aware of the decay in our health sector and the toll it takes on the most vulnerable members of our community. But what if I tell you that we have a chance, not just to transform our health system, but that this same system can create thousands of jobs, help with international diplomacy, and usher in a new age of science and innovation. This is Patrick Sawyer. It was the early morning of July 9th, 2014 in Monrovia. Patrick had just woken up and immediately panicked. He had been running a fever for a couple of days and nothing has worked. He quickly considered his options. Although he was an American, he knew trying to go back home would be impossible with the disease he suspected he had. Where else could he go where he could get reasonable good health care, not as good as the American system, but somewhere where the airport is porous enough so that it can slide in undetected. Patrick came to Nigeria with a deadly disease that ended up taking the lives of our frontline health workers. But this tragedy can also teach us something, something that will solve our problems and provide jobs for millions of people at scale. Let me take you to the future. Alice lives in Ouagadougou, and she has just been told she needs a critical surgery that may save her life. Although she's scared, she knows that help is just a few hours away. The hospital where she got her diagnosis has booked her to one of the state-of-the-art cardiac hospitals in Lagos, where she'll be treated by a world-class team of doctors and nurses. She's confident because she knows people all over West Africa travel down to Nigeria to get the help that they need. She trusts the Nigerian doctors and their caring team of nurses, and she's ready. By the time she caught her flight, she had already created five jobs. She took the fifth flight from Ouagadougou, and the flight was packed. She had helped to create 100 jobs. The shuttle from the airport, the hotel she checked into, the meals she ate, the tips she gave, all contributed to over 50 jobs. A medical team, the hospital catering company, the medical cleaning company, the security company, the company who delivered the blood and the oxygen she needed, all had helped save her life. And she in turn helped to create and sustain thousands of jobs. This is a medical ecosystem. If we invest in our health system, we can create a robust and resilient healthcare sector that employs 12% of our labor force. We can employ over 10 million people in direct and indirect roles and help save millions of lives. At LifeBank, we're at the forefront of this change. Our agile, data-driven and flexible approach to a health supply chain will help ensure that this future I describe will be possible. When COVID hit, it wasn't quite clear how our health system would respond. Would it decimate our population and strangle economic growth? At LifeBank, we quickly responded by helping build testing centers and expanding our oxygen delivery to the very last mile. At the height of COVID, we had helped to test 5% of the country's testing capacity. And we didn't stop there. We are building technology that would help our country respond to medical emergencies by using technology like blockchain to help transform our supply chain. To us, this investment is precisely what is needed to ensure that we provide jobs at scale by building innovation that creates a new market. Investing in our health system is the key to this.